So off the back of doing the front seatbelt diagnostic video the other week, quite a few subscribers actually turned around and said that they've got a similar problem, but with the rear seatbelts. So I thought today we'd have a look and see what's involved with trying to diagnose a bad connection on these rears. So it's probably going to be easier for getting to the connections for these to try and remove the bench seat. So I think we said before when we did a little video for that, it's just a couple of fixings. One down here, I think there's just a little cover and the same over there, and then it should just lift up and pull away. To do that, what I'm going to do is just put the front seats all the way forward just to give me a bit more room. Okay, great. So with the bench seat removed, we can now see the cables. We've got one here, obviously, for this one, one for the middle one, and then over here, the same again for the other one here. They're actually disappearing off under the kind of rear seat upright, so we may not necessarily have had to remove that bench seat, but it's good to know and then be able to see exactly what's going on anyway. So in the back, I've just taken a parcel shelf, obviously. What we can find, if we come here, just pull a bit of carpet forward, we can see the connections there. So we've got one just for that cable there, one for the middle one there, and I'm guessing there's gonna be another one, there we go, just for the one on the other side of the car as well. So it might be easier to take this bit of carpet out. I'm suspicious that if we just put the seats forward, what it's gonna do is obviously just come over the top of this. Let's have a look. Now if I just do it from here, obviously just push the button, push the seats forward, and yeah, straight away it's just covered up. So what we'll do, we'll just get this out, one, two fixings, and we'll just whip this bit of carpet out quickly. I should probably say as well, the fixings here and the fixings for the bench seat as well, they're all a, I think it's a six mil Allen bit. So just straight in there. And these just loosen off straight away. There we go. So now we can see them perfectly. So just because it's probably going to be a little bit easier, what we're going to do is just look at this one on the left-hand side of the car. So I believe they just um, come away, there we go, they just come away straight out of that kind of little seating that they sit in there. And we can see that we've just got a straightforward plug. So we've got the two, I don't know if you can see that, the red and the black just coming in there. So that's from the actual seatbelt itself. We've got that little cable coming in. Just two connections, exactly the same as you had on the front one, just coming into this plug. So hopefully what we should be able to do is just undo this plug pull it away and then we can get our multimeter on it. Okay, so to disconnect this plug, what you find, if you just turn it over, you can see this kind of clip just on the side here. And basically all it is, it's just there's this little barb kind of clip there. So you just push this little bit down and once you push that down, you can slide kind of this left-hand side bit out. So just pop that little clip in, get it moving and then away it comes, just like that. And then in here, we can see straight away just as we had on the front, you just about see them in there, the two pins for the seatbelt connector. So that's what we're gonna get our multimeter on. Okay, so we've got our multimeter, we've just got it on continuity. So hopefully you can hear, there we go, we're getting a nice beep whenever we've got a circuit. So we're just gonna pop these in, try and put them on the pins, and we can see that we've got a nice healthy circuit there with the seatbelt disconnected. So we know that's working fine. So if I just plug the seatbelt in, So there we go, so now the seatbelt's plugged in, and now we've got no continuity at all. And in actual fact on my one, we know it's working fine, because my indicator just by the uh, rear view mirror is working just okay anyway. So back in the front here, we can disconnect the seatbelt now, just get that out of the way. So if yours wasn't working, what would you now be able to do? Obviously with the cable here, you could just have a look at that, check it all the way up and down, make sure there's no cuts or snags, or anything like that, anything that's gone askew with it, shall we say. If there was, maybe you could look to replace that perhaps, or at least repair it or something like that. As it is safety, or a part of the safety system, I'd probably always recommend getting a new one at least anyway. Where that terminates into the back of the seatbelt, you know, they're meant to be kind of a sealed unit. So I'd recommend, if you can, either getting one from a spare supplier or if someone's breaking one, see if you can get a new one from them or something like that that works just fine. It's only a case realistically of just undoing the bolt that we saw before when I think we removed these rear uprights as well. So if, it, if you've got an issue with it, obviously look for anything obvious, like I say, the cable snagged or ripped or torn or whatever it might be there. And if you have to replace it, yeah, like I say, it'd be, it's gonna be better to replace the whole thing. So back around the back here, if for whatever reason, faulty seatbelt connection was stopping you from being able to actually drive the car, what you could do 
is obviously just create a jumper here. So if you've got the plug and the plug's okay, just short these two cables together, plug it back in, check it if it works, fine, fantastic. Uh, that would only kind of be a short term fix, obviously, because it is safety, so obviously safety first. If that doesn't work or if your plug is broken or cracked or something like that, you could obviously get a little jumper pin or something like that, a little bit of wire, just stick it across the two pins there and then turn the ignition on, see if it's working fine, check your display above you, your rear view mirror just to make sure that it's okay. And then that will get you out of trouble so that you can drive it for the interim period until you get obviously yeah, a new seatbelt pit. It'd probably be worth when you're doing that diagnosing just to make sure, but just short that pin out first. And then obviously with the ignition on, you'd be able to see on the indicator just above the panel there or just above the mirror there that it obviously clears the fault because if it's not clearing the fault by putting a jumper in that bit there then obviously it could be a problem with this bit of cable from here through the rest of the loom obviously it sits in or goes into the main loom panel there so take a little bit more <laughs> investigation if that's the issue but i'm suspicious that yeah if you've got a problem with your back seat belts where the connection isn't making it's going to be something to do with that cable there coming off the seatbelt itself, either this one, that one, or that one, but you'll know what it is from the indicator, saying if it's back, middle, or, or left, or which, whichever one it is. And then, yeah, hopefully, obviously, you'll be able to confirm that it is that bit, and that should get you out of problems. So after all that, the only tools we needed was just a little six mil Allen key, just to get that kind of, well, the two fixings for the seat out there, which we didn't actually end up needing to take out regardless anyway. And then the two bits for the carpet, so there was just one fixing here somewhere wherever it is down there and the one on the other side so there we go for today just another quick diagnostic one from a subscriber request so hopefully that's been useful if you have enjoyed it give us a like down below if you haven't done so yet remember to hit subscribe coming up here now it is the easiest way to make sure that you can find your way back to the videos and there's so many videos on the channel that should be out there hopefully for helping you whether it's removing the seats or whether it's changing the shocks or whatever it might be so much is on there so for now, thanks very much. Really appreciate you taking the time to watch it. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.